Rich with drywallinstruction.com. Let's take a few minutes to talk about how to fasten sheetrock to a newly framed wall. In this segment, we'll talk about nails versus screws. But before we get to that point, let's talk about adhesives or glues that they use. There are some that will tell you that you have to glue sheetrock to a wall to, to avoid nail pops and screw pops. Uh, that's not necessarily true. In the 25 years that I've been doing this, with residential construction, I've seen very few uh, times that they've used glue and adhesive. With the manufactured uh, housing sector, they always use glue. It's understandable because those houses are up and down the road and uh, they crack even though they are glued. But as far as the typical construction, it's not necessary in all cases. It might be, some might prefer it, but I don't see a lot of it used. If you are to use it, there's not a downside to it. I mean, there's not a problem with it. It's just an extra step. But when they use the adhesive, they'll use a caulk gun and they'll use liquid nails and they'll go ahead and put a uh, bead of glue all the way down on each of the studs. Then they'll put their sheetrock on and, and nail it or uh, screw it. And so that's just for your information. It's uh, not a, I mean, it's not a bad idea. It's just not necessary in most cases. Let's talk a little bit about nails first. We do still use nails in, in drywall. Uh, a dry, typical drywall nail, as you can see in the picture, it has a cupped head on it. It's important that you use the, the drywall nail in, instead of other nails. And the reason is when you sink a nail, a drywall nail, it'll leave a dimple and that cupped head will go in and it'll leave a dimple for you to put your mud in. And, um, and so uh, that's the purpose of the cupped head. Let's go ahead and, and hang a piece of sheetrock here and show you how it's done, how the, what different methods we use in fastening sheetrock. I'm going to go ahead and use a drywall kick that I talked about in the hanging section before and we'll get this sheetrock right up tight and we'll go ahead and sink the nail. Now in the picture that I'm showing you, you can see what it looks like when a nail has been sunk properly. There's a dimple, um, but the, sheet, the nail hasn't been sunk too far to where it actually broke the paper around the nail. If it breaks the paper around the nail, you need to re-nail re it, put a nail or screw next to it because it's lost the structural um, strength of the nail itself. And that same principle applies with screws. If you, if you screw it in too far and break the paper, then it has, that's not providing any strength and needs to be redone. The other thing to remember with putting nails or screws in is if you don't hit the stud good and if you just catch an edge or something and it's weak, you, you want to go ahead and pull it back out and, and do it properly. Because if you just go ahead and sink that nail farther or if you miss completely and you just sink the nail or screw and put mud over it, it'll pop out eventually. So the typical areas that we use nails would be around the border of the of the piece of sheetrock when we're hanging it. We'll either tack it with that and then screw the rest or we'll go ahead and do the whole border with nails and then put the screws in the field. And so that's where we use the nails. Nails do pop and so the, the areas that they pop generally, where I see most nail pops are at the top of the wall where the wall meets the ceiling or the ceiling where the, the ceiling meets the wall. And the reason for that is houses settle and they move and trusses move a little bit and, and uh, for different reasons. And if that happens, the nail will pop, but a screw will pop as well. And so that's just to know the other, the other uh, area that you see nails pop um, is where they do framing with wet lumber sometimes and that lumber shrinks down and moves and it'll pop the nails as well. So let's next let's go ahead and, and look at uh, drywall screws and how we can um, what methods we have for using drywall screws. Uh, drywall screw I'm showing you in the picture I'll show you a coarse thread and also a, a fine thread they come in different lengths Typically, uh, you'll use an inch and a quarter, inch and five eighths um, drywall screws. That, that would be for normal um, use. The only difference in screws is if you're doing metal framing, you have a self-tapping screw, and obviously you don't, you can't use nails in that, in that, then with the with the steel framing. But 
That's what a drywall screw is. There's a couple of different methods that I'm gonna show you for, for using screws. One is just using a cordless drill. And this is just a normal cordless drill, but it's got a special drill bit in it. And I'm showing you in the picture uh, the, what the, the drill bit looks like. This um, drill bit is a really simple idea, but it's really a great idea. It has no moving parts and it has a metal ring around it so that when you put your screw in, as you can see, you'll put your screw in and as soon as the, the uh, metal rim uh, gets to the surface of the sheetrock, then it kicks out. And so you heard the loud noise it, with either the screw gun or a cordless drill. If you don't have that loud noise when it kicks out, then you know that you haven't um, sunk into the stud and you need to redo it. And so that's uh, one method of, of putting screws in. The other is a drywall screw gun. And a drywall screw gun is a neat tool. As you can see in the picture, it has an adjustable head on it. This uh, screw gun does have moving parts. It has a clutch. And so this tip, when it's out, even if the screw gun is, is on, it's not spinning until it in, you engage it when you, when you put, press the screw in. This adjuster will um, adjust the tip in and out depending on how deep you want to set your screw. And so that's a really handy tool. The other benefit to a, a screw gun is that it has a switch that will lock the trigger on and you don't have to be pulling the trigger the whole time. And you can put your hand on it and load screws and, and uh, it's a faster method. And I'll go ahead and demonstrate that now. So you can see where the speed comes in. Um, once you get to, to handy at this, you can really uh, put a lot of screws in in a short amount of time. And so that's a handy tool. Now they've come up with some other ideas as far as screws um, in strips that, that with different types of guns. But these two methods will probably be the ones that you use on a small project um, to do to put your screws in. So let's talk about really quick um, the pattern for your screws. The code is different in different areas. And so you wanna make sure you look up your code and make sure that you know um, how many uh, screws are required. Typically in the field, what we call the field, the area in between the, the borders, there will be three different screws. You, three screws will be sufficient um, in the field. Um, that's for common, uh, normal situations. There can be different codes, and so you want to double check your codes, uh, especially if you have shear walls and that type of a thing in like earthquake zones, they'll require several screws in that same area. One of the things that I find most often when I'm on jobs is that I do a lot of taping after people, homeowners will hang their own sheetrock. They'll usually use too many screws instead of too few of screws. And you can't really use too many screws if they're all sunk properly, but it's just a lot of extra time and work and so um, they, they, they're comfortable with that process of putting screws in and they just go crazy and, and put a ton of screws in. Um, it's not necessary, the sheetrock's not going anywhere. With three in the field, you can't get that piece of sheetrock off without uh, destroying it. And so these are a few of the, the ideas that associated with fastening sheetrock. I hope that you'll find this uh, helpful and you'll continue to follow us here at drywallinstruction.com.